One of the things we did in the Eastern Cape uh, was identify a team of epidemiologists who could be assigned to each of the districts in Eastern Cape. And we asked uh, those individuals to work with the local team of people who were identifying uh, persons with COVID cases and following up their contacts. And we asked them to map the clusters of cases that there were in the districts of the Eastern Cape and to identify what those clusters were and why they came to be and um, to trace the persons that spread, that obtained COVID through those uh, clusters. And um, by far the commonest uh, reason for a cluster was that of a funeral. And this is quite understandable because during the period of lockdown in, co in, the, in um, Eastern Cape, funerals were really the only social gatherings that were allowed. The second commonest uh, uh, source of, of a cluster was usually associated with some essential service, so either a food um, a supermarket type entity or a chemist or um, a pharmaceutical chain or hospital. And um, these for me signify the potential that this outbreak has uh, once the lockdown is over. So um, funerals are, even if one limits the size of funerals, they are occasions when we cannot resist out of our own human need to provide comfort, to, to hug and to be close to people. And of course, uh, we know that transmission occurs under those circumstances. And you know, as far as uh, essential services go, um, you know, this, this virus that is spread through, through, through um, contact or through uh, um, uh, um, infection uh, carried on hands and the like, um, we know that uh, you know, these interactions are going to happen in places where essential services are rendered. Um, that tells me the potential for um, transmission and, and amplification of this outbreak after the lockdown is over is immense and very real. Um, something that we're not going to be able to avoid.